We talked about how most things are pretty much neutral in terms of charge, and that has to do with the fact that the forces between any unbalanced charge is so big, and we can illustrate that with this fairly simple question. To quantify the amount of force, we use Coulomb's law, which basically states, uh, let's go with this case, we have two isolated protons, so we have proton here and a proton here and they each have a certain amount of charge which is the same as the elementary charge and they are some distance apart in this case it's two let's just go with two times negative nine meters but apparently that's a typical distance between gas atoms and Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force is proportional to each of the charge that's involved so we'll call this Q1, call that Q2, and it's inversely proportional to not just the distance, but the square of the distance between them. Relating all this, there's a constant, doesn't have much of a name, this constant, but we call it K, and the number is 8.988 times 10 to the 9, and the unit works out to give you newtons in the end, so to cancel out the meters on the bottom, sorry, meter square on the bottom, and to cancel out the coulomb square on top, that's how it looks like. And in a pinch, you can sort of remember this as 9 times 10 to the 9, which seems like a pretty easy number to remember. But for most of our calculation, we'll use all the digits, because why not? That's the magnitude of the force, but we're asked about the acceleration. So let's take one of these proton and draw the free body diagram for this proton. Well, that's easy because we know the other proton somewhere to the left of it, so it must have a repulsive force because, as you know, like charges repel away from the other proton with Fe, and that's all the forces we have on it because the gravitational force is going to be minuscule and so we'll ignore it. So fundamental, let's call that positive x, so sum of forces in my x direction is equal to max, which is what we're looking for. Technically these are vector signs, and that's equal to kq1, q2 over r squared. To be more careful, because we've already decided on the direction of the force, technically these are just all magnitudes at this point, even, even this one. Sometimes you have r positive or negative, but usually we just find the magnitude separately and then work it back into our direction based on our free body diagram. Rest is just kind of plugging numbers in. The proton, of course, has the same magnitude of charge as an electron. Does one proton worth of charge cancel one electron worth of charge? Except, of course, it's positive, which I guess in this case we just take the magnitude anyways. Again, the nano becomes 10 to the negative 9 meters, and we square all that. Some uh, calculator work later. We get 5.7667, keeping lots of digits because we're not quite done yet. And that's in newtons. Not a huge force, but when we work out the acceleration, we have to divide by mass. Well, what's the mass of the proton? Well, Google will tell us, bam, pretty small mass, no surprise there. And that's what's going to give us a huge acceleration because the mass is so small. Newton divided by kilogram, we get meters per second square. And as you can see, it's very, very large. So that's why bare charges, like a singular proton flying in space, will get affected by other charges really easily and they will speed away from each other or more likely it will find an opposite charge and speed towards it and then they will neutralize each other. So that's why most things in the world will be neutral. As a quick aside to wrap things up, you might ask yourself why is it that in the nucleus then you have like a proton here, so say a helium nucleus, you have another proton here, and they're bound in a very, very small space with maybe some neutrons as well. And then the electrons way out here, flying about, occupying so much space, right? 
how come that these two protons don't fly apart? Well, as it turns out, there is another force once you get that close, and that's called a nuclear strong force, which we're not actually going to study, but just to drop you some words here. The nuclear strong force is what holds a nucleus together, despite and on top of electrostatic repulsion between two protons. So even though compared to gravity, the electrostatic force is huge, at very short distances, the nuclear strong force is even huger. And that's what's keep nucleus together. 